Hey kids, I'm Uncle Chef, and I'm in North Dakota on the Lewis and Clark Trail. I'm with the cooking crew. These kids know how to cook. And we're waiting for Cami Canola. And hey, well there she is. Hey Cami, what's going hey, on? Long Good time no see, see stranger. Good to see you, I miss you. Yeah. I'm Uncle Chef's local expert on edibles. Did you know that 85% of the United States canola comes from here, North Dakota? Wow. Hey Cami, believe it or not, the motto on the North Dakota governor's flag is strength from the soil. Cool. Guess when North Dakota became a state? 1889. Oh, wow. Yeah. Guess what the Lewis and Clark Expedition was also called? Mm. The Corps of Discovery. Oh, oh yeah, I remember hearing about that. And mm. Lewis brought his 140-pound dog, Seaman, on the whole expedition. Wow, that's a big dog. <laughs> well, that's why we're here. We're here because my great, 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 great uncle was a chef for the Lewis and Clark Expedition. What was his name? Cookie. <laughs> uncle Cookie. <laughs> You want to go back in time and see? Yeah. Let's go. Wow, that was some trip. This is amazing. We're in the middle of a real Hadatsa village. Yeah, and these are real earth lodges. Each lodge held several families, sometimes even 60 people. Their animals and horses and dogs even stayed there with them. There was one woman who made the expedition and saved their lives. <gasps> Sakaguya! Uncle Chef, Cammy, kids, I've been waiting for you. Come inside the earth lodge. I've made you something to eat. Awesome. Wow, that's special. Welcome to my Earth Lodge. Come on in, gather around. In this Earth Lodge, we kept the fire pits in the center and the smoke rises up to the smoke hole and the structure is made largely of wood. Sakakawea, does your name really mean bird woman? Yes, it is my Hidatsa given name. Sakakawea, what is your son's name? My son's name is Jean-Baptiste Charbonneau. On the expedition, we called him Pompey. So I understand that the crops of the Mandan people are corn, squash, uh, beans, and bison. Yes, actually we grew 13 different kinds of corn. Wow. That chili looks so good. What is in it? It's made with bison meat, and actually bison is vital to our culture. The Indians of the Northern Plains relied on the buffalo for many of their needs. From them, they obtained such necessities as food, clothing, shelter, and fuel. The animals also provided materials for artwork, ornaments, and ceremonial items. I know Lewis and Clark wrote about all they ate every day. So how much food do you think you'll have eaten by the end of the expedition? About seven tons. Wow, wow seven tons. Uncle Chef, would you like to try some chili? I would love to. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> this gives me a great idea. So, do you all want to go back to the future? Spot oh, of course! Whoa. Oh yeah, back in the kitchen. Wow, Whew. that was fun. We had a great time with Sakakawea. Yeah, yeah, and when I tasted her chili, uh, I got this great idea to make a healthy chili. Oh, with canola oil? With canola oil, yes. absolutely. Well, right here we have a mirepoix. It's a culinary term for celery, onion, and carrots. So another culinary term is mise en place. Mise en place means everything in its place. So we have everything in its place, all the vegetables and stuff that we're going to need to make our chicken chili today. I've made my chili with turkey. I've made my chili with vegetables. I've made my chili with pork. Mm. And all with canola oil. Another learning thing I wanted to go through is small, medium, and large dice. And there's a difference between small and medium and large dice, and I want to demonstrate that for you, okay? Okay, I'm going to cut this into thirds, and this is going to be my small dice. So I'm going to go like about that size. And then I rock my knife. My knife doesn't come off the board, so I'm not going to cut myself. So that's a small dice. A medium dice is a little bit larger. It's about like this. I might be taking my knife off the table a little bit more with that. And then the large dice is simply a large dice. So that's, that's it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our mirepoix and we're going to put it into our pan. And then we're going to get this glaze on the bottom of it. It's called a fond. And then when, once that fond develops, I'm going to take the chicken and put it in there and cook the chicken. And the chicken's going to absorb that fond. 
and then I'm going to add everything else, bring it to a simmer, and we're done. One of the nice thing about making it with the canola, too, is it won't have an oily taste because the oil is so light. So mild. Yeah. Correct. So let's get started. Mmm, this is coming along just right. While this is cooking, let me tell you a little bit more about Sakakawea. In 1804, Lewis and Clark were looking for one more person for their expedition. The explorers would need someone who could speak to the Shoshone. Toussaint Charbonneau brought his pregnant wife, Sakakawea, to meet Lewis and Clark. She could speak Shoshone, he told them. Lewis and Clark agreed to pay them $500. In the early 1800s, this was a fortune. Sakakawea and her husband were now part of the core of discovery. The couple moved into Fort Mandan for the winter. Yeah, this chili's ready. Oh, oh yeah. Yummy. Good. Yeah. So, good. so how many people would this chili serve? Uh, I'd say 10 to 12 people. Yeah. What's the difference between Sakakawea's chili and your chili? Well, we use canola oil and we use chicken instead of bison. Mm -hmm. Is this chili good for leftovers? Oh, it's better tomorrow. You're going to love it tomorrow. I like mine spicy. What would you add to spice it up a bit? Chili powder, definitely. I didn't put any chili powder in this batch. What do you think? Oh, it's I like so it. Good. It's so good. And it's so healthy because we made it with canola oil. Butterflies! Oh. 